make about 45 million pounds of chips in a quarter. That equates to about 200 million pounds of potatoes, which is quite a few. What's interesting with M&T is, is they're a small town bank, and as we've grown, they've also grown with us. They've got the resources that you would need in order to go big, but they also have that friendly local community feel so that it makes it seem easier than it probably is. Hello, and welcome to Candidates Up Front. This program allows voters to get information directly from the candidates in the May 18th primary election. It is a joint project of the League of Women Voters of Berks County and Berks Community Television. Both are nonpartisan organizations that never support, nor do they oppose, any political party or political candidate. Today, the featured race is judge of the Magisterial District Court. The Magisterial District Judge generally handles traffic violations, landlord-tenant matters, and civil matters where the action where the amount claimed is less than $12,000. The judge also presides at arrangements, sets bail, issues warrants, and performs duties of a similar nature. The current salary is $93,338, and magisterial district judges serve a six-year term. There are three candidates running, but only two are running for both parties. This means that Democrats will select one of three candidates, and Republicans will select one of two candidates. The candidates are Priscilla Campos, Ty Ryan Cooper, and Peter Rosario. All will be asked the same questions in the same order with the same general time limit. Each candidate's views are their own and not necessarily those of the League or BCTV. Today our candidate is Priscilla Campos. Welcome Priscilla. Thank you very much for inviting me over. Would you please tell us why you decided to run for district judge and what education and background that you bring to this position? You can have two minutes for that. I was born and raised in New York City, and I moved with my family 16 years ago in the city of Reading. I am the first generation to have an education and a graduate. I have a master's degree in public administration and a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. I also just got certified by the Minor Judicial Board. This, my education has prepared me with the skill and knowledge necessary to serve and to serve the public in this position. And I plan to be the first Hispanic woman in Berks County to sit as the Magisterial District Judge for the District 23201. Thank you. Is there a person or perhaps a moment or a special experience in your life that influenced you to run for District Judge? Aside from my education, uh, my family support, but also Within my 10 years of public service, I met a lot of people in the judicial system and in the courts that also influenced me to continue and to pursue this position in the future. And what personal qualities do you have that you would bring to this position to make you an effective district judge? Aside from my education that, uh, that have provided me with the experience and the education in magisterial, uh, my character, uh, my character that I have lead by example um, in my 10 years of public service to the community. Thank you. Could you tell us about the area that is served by this particular court? And we could define it in wards and precincts, but nobody really identifies that way. So tell us about what district we're talking about. So we're talking about the district 23201. It covers ward 18, 1, 4, and 5. So is the southern area of Reading, um, Lancaster Avenue up to the CVS, and the Morgantown Road. 
um, up to the court. I'm not really sure the, the, the street name, but it covers those those areas in the city of Raleigh, mostly the south area. Thank you. What is the importance of this position? Uh, why would it matter to the average voter? It is very, uh, to be a district judge is very important. We may, a district judge takes covers, like you mentioned earlier, cases, mostly traffic cases, can be the first or only encounter that a community will have with a judge. It's very important for the community to know who are they um, gonna select and vote for based on their experience and the education and the preparation and skills necessary to articulate the law based on the cases coming in front of them. Um, as a district judge, you will be dealing with areas in civil law and in criminal law, and most people aren't too familiar with that. So if you could explain what the difference is, perhaps give us some examples of each, and explain what, how the district judge, what the role is in handling each of those kinds of things. So like you mentioned earlier, we do cover civil law. Civil law are like landlord and tenant cases. Um, and also civil matters, um, less than $12,000. Those are the cases that come in front of us. Um, and criminal law are like the arraignment, setting bail, um, um, preliminary hearings. Those are the type of cases that come into a uh, magisterial district judge court. Um, and how will we handle these? each of these role? Well, it depends. For instance, um, the, the, we have to abide by the civil law, um, where the, the difference is that the plaintiff will be the one initiating the civil case. And in a criminal case, it will be the police officer or the law enforcement officer, the person initiating uh, the case or the citation. So that's the difference from the civil and criminal. Um, and how will I roll um, on these cases? Um, with impartiality, um, being neutral, being fair, and and abiding by by the law and the the case in front of me and the facts. Thank you. Now, the district judge decides whether there's sufficient evidence for a criminal case to go to trial. What will you consider when making this decision? Um, for instance. Um, when it comes to sufficient evidence, for instance, like what are the facts presented, uh, what document or receipt or paperwork I need to see to take um, in consideration for the case. Um, those are type of the evidence that I will be looking for for and making sure I have it on hand or ask, um, or ask and review when handling a case. District justices also set bail. What criteria will you use to decide whether bail is needed, and what criteria will you use to determine how high the bail should be set? Yes, we do set bail, and there are 10 criterias that we have to follow. For instance, like the nature of the offense. Um, does that uh, offender has a job, or their employment history, their residence, any criminal history or criminal or any bail set before aside. Those type of things we have to consider when, set, when setting bail. It's not only what the case or the facts, but also their financial situation. Can they afford this bail or not? And also the case, how the, the case requires or, or this person is a flea, has a criminal history of fleeing, not coming back to the court, then I will consider um, like, release with, if, if they are first offender, I will consider um, release with all, with their own knowledge of coming back to court. And if not, then it will be a penalty with a financial um, or monetary. What do you think is the most important problem in your district that you'll be handling? Most of the cases, um, I live in the South area of Reading and most of the, the cases that I have, or most of the problem that I have seen is traffic. 
So I, I, am, I am expecting a high level of traffic cases. And I am aware that traffic cases are one of the higher, higher level cases coming into magisterial districts. Mm -hmm. um, all the district courts in the, throughout the city of Reading have to deal with zoning violations. And how can district judges, who they're serving in different districts, uh, how can you assure fair and uniform approaches across the city so that zoning is not treated differently one place than another? Um, it, it, can you rephrase that a little more? Well, in your court, wherever you sit in mm -hmm. a district court in, in Reading, the, the zoning laws of the city apply, and you'll have to be dealing with people who violate those laws. And I think there's the question must have come up at some point because people who were in one district judge area were treated differently than someone in a different district. So how do you get everybody on the same page that all district justices are treating it the same way so everybody throughout the city gets similar treatment? My, my role as a judge is to be fair and objective. Um, and be neutral in a case by case. So once I, I uh, my goal with 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 that type of case is basically what once I'm once I'm a sitting judge or elected judge, speak with my colleagues, the other judge. How do they handle those cases? So I will be asking them questions because they probably have more experience than I do. Um, I want to make sure that I'm also being fair with my community and and in across not only in my district but across Berks County. So I will speak with my colleagues. <laughs> um, in Pennsylvania, judges run as a member of a political party. What is the significance of party affiliation for a district judge? I am cross-filing. Um, I have the opportunity that I could cross-file Burton Republican Party and a Democrat Party. Um, and it's very important to, to my goal was to basically meet everyone, not only specifically on a party. I, I when walking the streets and getting my petitions, I walked my streets and I was making sure that I met each and every voter in my district, not only their party, but it's important because of their principles and beliefs, the reason why they are part of a party. But I take that in consideration, but as a judge, it's more important for me to serve them neutrally and be fair and objective. Okay. What community problems can the district judge help alleviate? I think it will be mostly landlord and tenant. Um, those are the most intensive cases, civil cases that come in front where there's a lot of dispute. Um, I think that the judge being partial, being neutral, help alleviate the issue in front. And are you involved in volunteer or community work? And if so, please tell us about it. Yes, um, during my campaign, I have the opportunity to meet a lot of people in the community. I am going to create um, and engage with the community part where people can meet me. I am um, getting in contact with so many organizations right now during my campaign and will be. Um, for instance, here at BCTV, I wanted to make sure that I reach the public and the public knows that I am running and that I am part of the community. For when they see me in the community, we can meet, we can talk, we can be involved. As a member of the judiciary, what can you do both on the bench and off the bench to ensure that all Pennsylvanians have access to justice? Most important is lead by example. Um, in the bench, I have to be impartial. I have to be fair. Um, and I have to be neutral. So in the bench, I will lead by example. And outside of the bench, the same way, leading by example based on my behavior. I want to make sure that everyone coming in front of me um, have the justice that they need and require based on the facts presented. Okay, we would love to hear you make your closing statement, and you've been very succinct in your answers, so you can have up to four minutes. Well, uh, I want to make sure I reach out to the public and to Berks County. I, on May 18, I will, I will ask for your vote, to vote for Priscilla Camfer for District Judge 23201. I am the most educated certified by the Minor Judicial Board 
and I will lead by example. I want you to know I am here, I will represent my community, and come out and vote. Stay tuned, I also have a website that is www.judgebcampos.com that you could visit, get, no, get more to know me, but also if you haven't registered, visit my website. I have that ability for you to start registering. I want the youth as well that haven't had the opportunity to also know the importance of your vote in your municipal and local elections. So see you soon, see you in the community, and thank you so much for your support and I'm asking you for your vote. Thank you, Priscilla. It's been a pleasure having you here. And Priscilla is running for district judge in uh, the 23201 district, which she described as in the south part of Reading and Lancaster Avenue up to the CVS. Um, we, I want to remind our viewers that we are dealing with a municipal primary election. It takes place May 18th. Uh, you must be registered by May 3rd to vote in this election. And on election day, our polls are open from 7 in the morning to 8 at night. You may vote at your polling place or by absentee or mail-in ballot. The last day to apply for one of these paper ballots is May 11th. And all paper ballots must be returned to the County Board of Elections by 8 p.m. on election day. Now, we call this a municipal primary election. So a municipal election is the election when we select candidates for local office as well as our state judges. It is a big election. You will find more candidates on the ballot than you expected. And these elections, which are the local people representing us, are very important to how we govern ourselves. So we encourage everyone to be registered and to vote. Um, they say that the issues closest to your pocketbook are the ones that happen locally. So this will have, this election will have an impact on your pocketbook. It's surely exciting to see the, the national elections, the statewide elections, and all the ads on TV. This election doesn't have that, but it has more that affects our local pocketbooks, more that affects our local situation on how we lead and how we govern ourselves than any other election. So we encourage you, if you thought it was important to vote this, this past fall, it's doubly important to vote now. Now, this year, it's especially important because we have some amendments to our Constitution on the ballot. And while in a primary election, which this is also, it's the parties choosing their candidates, all voters vote on, on any ballot questions. So it doesn't matter what party you're registered in or if you're registered without a party. You are needed at that polling place for these questions that are on the ballot. And one of the constitutional, two of the constitutional amendments that will be on the ballot deal with checks and balances in our government. And those are very important questions and every one of you needs to weigh in. Um, as I said before, to vote for candidates, you need to be a Democrat or a Republican. A primary election is when those parties select their candidates. And we have a whole lot of things on the ballot. I'm going to start with the, uh, the judges that are statewide and tell you a little bit about what each of those courts do. We will be electing one justice for our Supreme Court. Now, Pennsylvania's Supreme Court writes rules for the court. Um, it judges rules and court attorneys. They're all governed by the Supreme Court. And it is the final court of appeal, and here's 3,000 appeals each year. Now what's really fascinating is this is the oldest Supreme Court in the nation, established in 1784. So we were the leader in setting up a court of appeals uh, for our state. We will also be electing one judge of the Superior Court. Now, Pennsylvania's Superior Court hears cases on appeal, usually by a three-judge panel. The panels meet in Harrisburg, Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia, and the whole court has 14 judges and five senior judges. We will also be electing two judges of the Commonwealth Court. Commonwealth Court is unique to Pennsylvania. It hears matters involving state and local governments and regulatory agencies. 
and there are nine judges and three senior judges on this court. So if you have a matter where you think a state agency treated you unfairly, maybe it was uh, unemployment benefits or something like that, you're going to bring that case. It will be heard in a local court, and then it will go to the superior court. Um, we're electing two judges um, for the Court of Common Pleas right here in Berks County. And the Courts of Common Pleas are local trial courts. Berks is one of the 23 districts in the state, and we have 13 judges. Well, there are more, actually, there are more districts than that, but we have 13 judges. I have to get that right. Um, and we're voting. Um, there are six magisterial districts in, in Berks County that are up for election. We heard from a candidate for one of them today. The uh, 23201 that she's running for is the only one where there's a contested primary election. So that's the only one where there's a contest this spring. And as we noted earlier, the magisterial courts set and accept bail and hold preliminary hearings. They determine if criminal courts should go to the Court of Common Pleas. They deal with traffic tickets, landlord-tenant issues, and small claims. So if you have an issue with someone and it's under $12,000, you would take that to the Magisterial District Court. And Berks County has eight of them. Uh, those judges serve a six-year term, and we elect six every other year. Um, we should also note that amongst those judge candidates, we will see some that are up for retention. Now, judges serve a 10-year term, but then instead of running for re-election, they are on the ballot unopposed. Voters may choose to retain them for another 10 years by voting yes, or they may vote no and put the judge out of office. Now, also on this ballot, I told you it was a long list of candidates you'll be choosing. We have some countywide races. Uh, the county treasurer is up for election, the county coroner, and the prothonotary, all up for election. And in each precinct, we will be electing a constable. Now, in each of Berks County's 18 school districts, Democrats and Republicans will select candidates for school boards for four and two-year terms. Some districts select their boards at large and some by regions. So pay attention to those races as well. And in the city of Reading, Bosers will also choose candidates for city council president, and they will select city council members in district one, four, and five. And there are two of those districts where there is a contest, and we are planning to have as many of those candidates as will be interviewed interviewed so you can hear their views from their own mouths on candidates up front. Now in townships, voters will select commissioners or supervisors and auditors and tax collectors. And in boroughs, they will select mayors, council members, auditors, and tax collectors. Now we did note earlier in the program candidates for judge and also for school director may cross file. That means they may run as both Democrats and Republicans. So if you have a household where you're split uh, one Republican, one Democrat, you may see the same names for school director and for judge on your ballot. Now to vote, as I said earlier, you must be registered by May 3rd. To register, or if you'd like to just check and make sure you are properly registered, or if you want one of the paper ballots, either the absentee or the mail-in ballot, there's an easy website where you can get all of that done. It's votespa.com. That's V-O-T-E-S-P-A dot C-O-M. Very, very useful website, very easy to maneuver around. And it is available, I should say, in Spanish as well as English. So if you find some of these things difficult to understand in a language that is not your first language, switch to the other language and have it in a language that's easiest for you. Now, if you have questions on who's going to be on your particular ballot, there's another website you can go to, and that's for vote411.org. That's V-O-T-E 411.org. And the League is working on a, a project to make sure that with our local races, we, we probably won't have them all in for the spring, but we hope to by fall, 
and we will be asking those candidates a question so you can see how they answered the question right there on that website, Nose on Your Ballot, to help you make the decisions getting information directly from the candidates. Now, if you have questions about voting, about your status, about um, who's on your ballot, any of those questions, there's another source, and you don't have to have a computer or be online literate to find it. And that's our Berks County Election Services. I'm going to give you their phone number, so if you don't have paper and pencil, please go get one. Um, you'll be talking to a live person. Again, you can talk to them in English or in Spanish. They can reply in English or Spanish, so you can get the information in a way that's easy for you to understand it. Um, election services can send you the application for an absentee or mail-in ballot, and they can answer all your questions about the election. The phone number at election services is 610-478-6490. That's 610-478-6490. And please, continue to watch BCTV for more candidate upfront interviews. Um, and our League of Women Voters present, uh, program, League of Women Voters Presents, which is on the second Tuesday of the month at 8 o'clock, uh, in April, it's going to be focusing on those ballot questions, uh, the ones involving our Constitution. So you will want to see that program as well. And for the League of Women Voters, I thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you'll be at more candidates up front. And I'm Judith Cranus. Good day. We make about 45 million pounds of chips in a quarter. That equates to about 200 million pounds of potatoes, which is quite a few. What's interesting with M&T is, is they're a small town bank, and as we've grown, they've also grown with us. They've got the resources that you would need in order to go big, but they also have that friendly local community feel so that it makes it seem easier than it probably is. Thank you.